Hello and welcome to the Cyber Den, your weekly dose of tech and games. I, Jake, will be chatting with none other than video game composer and sound designer Andrew Hulschultz. Thanks for coming on once again, mate. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Now, Andrew, as you know, this interview will primarily be about the compositions for the retro-inspired shooter Dusk and the fantasy-themed FPS Amid Evil. So, let's start right at the beginning with all this. How did you get on board with these projects? Um, okay, so we'll, we'll start with Dusk. Uh, Dusk was essentially, um, it was Dave Oshry who had hit me up, who is uh, the, uh, I guess, is essentially the CEO of New Blood. We worked together on Rise of the Triad because he was one of the lead investors for it. And he also did a lot of, uh, a lot of the producing on the game. Big majority of it, actually. He contacted me. We hadn't worked together in quite some time, probably uh, pretty much since Rot. And he said, hey, he's like, I've, I've got this game that I think that, that uh, your music style would be perfect for if you're interested. Do you want to check it out? And then, you know, he had me sign an NDA and uh, sent me a build of it. And then I immediately could tell right off the bat, I was like, man, this this feels really familiar. Uh, I couldn't, he didn't give me anything, didn't tell me anything going into it, but I just I was like that that feels a lot like Quake, man. Like that's that's pretty interesting that the movements it's it's pretty close, but it feels just a tad enough different that it's a little bit more fun, like as far as a, a modern shooter goes. And he was like, yeah, he's like that's what that's what got me hooked in too was was the movement. And so uh, he introduced me to David Szymanski, uh, who is building the game pretty much by himself. And uh, we talked quite a bit just about, um, you know, hey, do you want, do you want your own soundtrack? Is that something that you'd be interested in? You know, do you want to pay for this? Blah 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 blah. And you know, he, at first he was like, ah, uh, he's like, I, I really want to do everything myself. And I was, I was, I was okay with that. I was like, you know what? It's, it's totally, it's your baby, no biggie. But uh, I was a little tiny bit adamant because I, I, I had an idea for what I wanted to do with this and I kind of just really wanted to see it through. So I went as far as to take the uh, the demo level that they made and actually make uh, basically how we have everything set up an ambient and an action track and some some transitional cues to it and looking back on it they're terrible and I would have said no to myself <laughs> but uh, he David was like, yeah, hey, you know what? Let's let's give it a try. And um, the first couple levels that we did came out really well. And I started getting a little bit more and a little bit more comfortable with with what I was getting into. And it started spiraling completely out of control and turned into something really really cool. But um, that's that's how I got into Dusk. That was the very beginning, and we'll we'll tell that whole story at some point. It's. It's a really lengthy one, and it hasn't been written completely yet. But there's a, there's a lot of weird twists and turns there. But that's that's how I got into it. Um, a medieval was uh, was actually uh, Leon and Simon, which are the two developers uh, working on this game, along with New Blood. Uh, with uh, their company's called Indefatigable. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm terrible. <laughs> and. Um, they basically, I've worked with both of these guys since ROT 2013 as well. So ROT's kind of brought everybody together again. Leon and Simon and I have worked on, we worked on uh, all the stuff that Interceptor Entertainment did. And uh, a little bit post. And we would stay up super late at night and just kind of get on Skype and hang out while we were working. And we did that for years. And at one point they were like, you know what, I, we have these ideas and we really want to do this. We're getting kind of tired here and it feels a little sterile. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna start our own company and start making our own games. And, I, and they, the first thing they asked me, they were like, hey, are you on board? I was like, yeah, man, like we're, we're, we're really good friends. They're like, cool, we got the whole budget lined up and everything and uh, we've already got it cut out for you and... You just all you need to do is sign, and I was like, "Oh, okay, all right, right on." I'd actually watch them build this, of course, moving into it, like just all these preconceptual alphas and everything of of what this game was going to be. And, and you know, at one point, all the enemies were just dots moving on a screen, representing a three D person. And but you could still see the potential. I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" 
uh, like the rock dudes coming out of the uh, <laughs> coming out of the wall. Dave's gonna kill me for not using their regular, their real name, but uh, they they had all this stuff rigged up a long time ago, and it's crazy how much of it uh, has come together. And that's basically how I started on that. Was we we both were just like, hey, we want to we want to do our own thing. They wanted to start their own video game company. I wanted to see how many developers actually wanted to work with me outside of Interceptor Entertainment. So we, we just started working together. <laughs> you know, it's the, the two first companies to hire me or the two friends that I've known for a very long time, or three rather. But uh, yeah, that's that's how that started up. There's a lot of long nights in, uh, in development just, uh, just going, man, we've got these ideas and we want to iterate on them. And I would just kind of add on as we were going i'm like you know this would be cool this would be cool it's the same way with dust but yeah <laughs> that's how i started on this so basically it sounds like uh tldr version is basically hey andrew mate uh, do you want to compose from a game yeah sure hey do you want to compose for this one yeah well, uh, pretty much hey not a bad way to get into it <laughs> just keep yourself open keep yourself available you know <laughs> let's play a sample from dusk Okay, let's start off with Dusk. For those who have been living under a rock, it basically looks and plays like id Software's Quake, the uh, classic 1996 shooter, but in my opinion, just better in like so many ways. I think it's a fantastic game. Quake is awesome, and it's like super near and dear to my heart, and there's no way that I'll ever sit here and be like, Dusk is better than Quake, because I'll get crucified. But... <laughs> Like I, I I like the new elements that it's brought to it. Like like you know the uh, no gimbal lock stuff. The um, some of the making bunny hopping easier for players. I don't know if everybody's found that yet, but this is the first game that I could actually successfully continue to bunny hop and everything. And yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like uh, I don't know. Like it, it does iterate on on quite a few things to make it a little bit cooler as far as like some of the sounds and like you know triggering different stuff in the soundtrack rather than just having it rip off a cd but uh it definitely wears its inspiration on its sleeve so where did you draw inspiration from when you were making the soundtrack for dusk and what, what were you trying to achieve what were your intentions with the dusk soundtrack okay so uh <laughs> um like I was saying earlier, uh, like at the very beginning, it wasn't, it was a little murky. Uh, it's like, what do we want to do with this? Well, we want it to be synth based. It started off as being, well, I'd, I'd like to kind of, if I remember correctly, it was, it was, we kind of want to steer clear a little bit from the guitar realm and make it a little bit more, uh, you know, obviously Nine Inch Nails, early Quake kind of sound to it. And the further along that we got, the more I started feeling a lot more comfortable with the sound that we'd made. In fact, the entire build of that first episode was really how I knew, okay, this is going to be okay and this is going to work and this, the soundtrack should translate to people because I was scared shitless that uh, it wasn't going to, nothing was going to translate. And it's just like, why did you guys hire this guy that's just making these guitars sound like utter crap? It's like, no, 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 you don't get it. Like, it's it's designed that way. If you go listen to older industrial albums, they're really in your face for a reason. They take up the entire frequency spectrum because it's supposed to sound ugly and it's supposed to be in your face and, you know, all this other stuff. But, um, like, it started off as, as really synth-based and uh, it started moving a little bit more and a little bit more into uh, situations in the game where... I started kind of poking and prodding, kind of going, you know, these, uh, you know, something heavier might be more suited here. And um, David was really cool about everything. He's like, if that's what you feel like, man, he's like, just give it a try. And um, the first few that I did, he really, really liked. He's like, this is this will work out perfect. And after that, he's he pretty much hasn't. He hasn't had any real negative feedback at all from me, which is really nice. He just he's he's like, hey, you just do you. You know what you're doing, 
I'm not going to guide you at all. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I want. I may throw an idea out there every now and then, but just let it be you, which is what every artist ever wants to work with whenever they're working on a uh, a for hire piece of art. So it's been so awesome to get to that point to where it's just, yeah, just do you. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, that's pretty much where the where a lot of the inspiration started was Nine Inch Nails and it just started evolving into stuff. There's there's obviously a lot of typo negative in there too in that first episode. In the second episode, really, it starts moving a little bit towards uh, like there's a little bit of Rammstein in there and there's late 2000s Nine Inch Nails, but it all kind of sits in the same vein. It's supposed to be weird. It's supposed to be heavy at times. And it's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable, but still something that you can kind of jam to. Here comes a music sample from Dusk. What equipment did you use for Dusk's soundtrack, and what kind of tricks did you pull off to achieve some of the eerie, twisted sounds in this one? So, there's a lot of stuff on there. There's a, uh, there's a Roland SEO2 that's used for a lot of the sub synth sounds, which is um, Roland's Moog Model D clone, which Studio Electronics actually helped make for them. Recently, there's a uh, there's an addition to a, a with a Behringer DeepMind, which is a, a big synth that I've always wanted since I saw it come out. I was like, oh, this is super interesting. Look at this thing. You can just do all this sound design. It's crazy. So I started using that recently. Um, outside of that, I would do experimentations with synths. Like um, I had a Korg Mini Log at one point that I was taking out from the Mini Log and going into things like a uh, an MXR bass compressor, an MXR M80 bass distortion. I'm just looking over at the pedals right now. <laughs> uh, an Earthquaker Devices Arpenoid, a Fuzz Factory, an Earthquaker Bit Commander, gosh, uh, uh, Electromonic Synth 9. I mean, and I would put everything through a Moog filter. Like, there's a huge Moog filter that I bought about a year and a half ago, and it's arguably the coolest sounding filter ever. Like, every record you've ever heard where it does that thing where it takes all the highs out and then brings it back up. Like I guarantee you nine times out of 10, that's been run through some kind of Moog filter, unless it's a heavy metal album, they'd never do that. Uh, and outside of that, that entire chain, everything goes into a reverb unit, which is one of two reverbs, an Earthquaker Devices Transmitter version two, or an Earthquaker Devices Afterneath. Um, both are really long reverbs, one's just a little bit more fucked up than the other. Uh, but yeah, like that whole pedal chain, I mean, like there's, there's photos of it. I'm sure you've seen on, uh, my Twitter account and stuff like that, where I'll take like a bass and I'll run it through a whammy pedal, which will just take it, you know, another octave down, which is dumb. And then just run it through all these pedals and get these crazy sounds with a volume pedal where I can swell it. And it just sounds like something completely different. That's been the majority of Dusk is just running stuff through pedals, running synths into other synths, and using a lot of virtual instruments as well, like uh, Omnisphere, the entire complete collection. Jeez, um, I'm trying to think of what else. If I was in front of my work computer, I'd be able to tell you, but um, a lot of synth or a lot of string libraries as well, like East West. But, um, yeah, that's been the majority of it, is just running stuff through pedals and seeing what the outcome is. And if it sucks, throw it away. If it's awesome, keep going. Oh, oh, oh. there's one more, one more. There's one more thing that I have that's actually really cool. I've never seen anybody else use it. It's a company called Electrofaustus. It makes a thing called a drone thing. And it's eight oscillators that are all just on, like, a big pedal box that you can turn on and off. And you can tune them how you want, and it's that's another thing that I think I actually used on uh, episode one for the the level for the cutty mines, I believe, for some of the uh, the lower stuff. Here's another sample from the Dusk soundtrack. 
And here comes another soundtrack sample. does the songwriting process go down for each track for Dusk? Uh, basically open a session and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I just go into it. I don't even really think a whole lot about what I just made. I know that the sound of the song that I just made and I know I need to complement it somehow or make it fade somehow into this next piece you know, properly. It can't just be two completely abstract ideas yet. I'll just open up a session after playing a level. He'll send me essentially a build of a level. David will. And um, I'll see what comes to mind and we'll run through it and uh, I'll basically capture an entire piece of footage and then I'll drag and drop it into uh, to Studio One, the, uh, the software I'm using to record everything. And then I'll start writing things underneath it and then once I find something that sticks I'll just start building and not look at the footage and then I'll go back to the footage and be like is there any areas that have really high tension or that need some attention to detail as far as like showing off a new character or maybe there's a, a boss fight or maybe there's a huge group of enemies that you're going to be stuck around for a little bit that I feel like is significant enough that, you know, it requires its own separate track. And then I'll build something under that as well. And then we'll make, like, stingers and uh, and transitional cues so that everything just kind of works together. We're still working with uh, some of the limitations in engine from what we're doing, but uh, we're making it sound the best we can. But uh, that's that's pretty much the process for for each level. Here's a tough question. Which would you say was your favorite track from Dusk? It's actually pretty easy. <laughs> uh, it's one that nobody knows the name of just yet. It's the, uh, it's called, uh, oh man, I've been mastering these all weekend and I can't believe I can't, I forgot the name. I believe it is E1M8 or M9. It's the action track for that, but it's, it's called uh, Unquenchable Anger. And it's the first time during the entire development of that game where once I was done, I was like, that's the sound. That's the sound I've been looking for this entire time. And I reused it quite a few times going back all the way over the entire, ep entire first episode and being like, okay, this action track needs to be here. We need this sound here. We need it there. We need it there. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'll send you a, a file that you can play. Um, after I get done talking about this, but uh, yeah, like it's 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 totally '90s industrial, perfect to me in my head <laughs> as as to what matches with this game, and that that's that was the one that I was like, oh, there it is. Need to stick with that. Um, as far as uh, it being favorite favorite, you know, like you can't pick your favorites, but I'd say that's the one that has the most meaning to me. Um, it's the one that shaped everything going forward, for sure. Moving to a medieval again, where did you draw inspiration from for its soundtrack, and what direction were you going with it? The direction given to me from when I started was, hey, look, you can do whatever you want with this, we trust you, but we'd really like to draw inspiration from uh, soundtracks that were done in uh, UX, which is like um, uh, Deus Ex was, was one of them, Unreal, uh, those weird abstract soundtracks that are just too good like they're they're really really good <laughs> and um so what I, what i did was uh i went back and i actually played and finished for the first time don't burn my house down uh the the original deus ex i had never finished it beforehand i'd always gotten to a point been like i'll come back to this and then i never get to it um so i went and finished that i went back and played unreal unreal tournament and just kind of 
got a vibe for all these all these soundtracks. And the other thing that I took to it that they they never mentioned was I I was like, man, you got a big sword and all these melee weapons, dude. This is freaking overpowered Skyrim. So some of uh, some of Jeremy Soule's work too. I I got pretty inspired. Er, can't talk today. Pretty inspired from. So it's it's a mixture, a weird mixture in between Unreal <laughs> Skyrim and uh, and Deus Ex. All those soundtracks kind of is what I use for my inspirational funnel on that game. And I really like how abstract it's come out. I didn't think I could I could do anything like this. Let's tune into a little bit of a medieval soundtrack. Now, people say that the game looks very much like 90s medieval-themed first-person shooter games like Heretic and Hexen. I'm guessing that you didn't implement any aspects of these games' soundtrack? You decided to keep it more of a, an original and fresh listen? Yeah, absolutely. Nail on the head right there. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a... It looks like Heretic, Hexen, you know, or, you know, it it's obviously drawing some inspiration from there but we wanted to go a completely different way with with the music uh leon is really 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 he's he's one of the lead developers on that leon is very in tune with with good music and i trusted him on a lot of the ideas that he was sending me for uh for a medieval and um a lot of that was some of the UX music. He was like, you should really go back and listen to these. And he just sent me files back and forth. Now, as far as small Easter eggs and nods to Heretic and Hexen that are audible, yeah, you can hear that with the player. Uh, it wasn't completely intentional, but uh, there's definitely a laugh in the game whenever you pick up weapons That's <laughs> everybody's pretty much picked up on so far. Is the songwriting process for each track any different when you're working on A Medieval compared to Dusk? And were you using similar music equipment, or maybe you were throwing in a few extra bonus tidbits to the mix? I actually didn't run very much stuff through uh, uh, through pedals for A Medieval. I wanted to keep it as minimalist as possible, but um, keep it as abstract as possible. So it was, how many synths can you layer on this to where it sounds weird, but it doesn't sound terrible? Um... So, like the Deep Mind synth recently, uh, Omnisphere and uh, Arturia's entire collection, the old, all the old school synth collection that they have, has actually played a giant, huge part in a medieval soundtrack. Uh, as far as the songwriting goes, the songwriting is really free. Um, it doesn't doesn't require too much thought into it. It's just find the you know lee jackson or bobby prince hook that you can run with find that first and then you can add everything else on top of it once i find that and it's normally comes in the bass section uh then i'm good i can add in all the weird stuff i want and i can throw in weird timings if i really want to i can make it wrap around um yeah it's it's just start with a, a simple melody and work your way out so it's a little bit different uh dusk was uh, very much a uh, an uphill battle for me personally, but a, medi a medieval's been uh, hey go ape shit, you know, <laughs> which has been awesome so far. Let's listen to an unreleased track from a medieval. Which would you say is the standout track from a medieval? Standout track from a medieval. I don't know if there is one that comes straight to mind because they're all so, so, so cool. Uh, <laughs> that sounds so tooting my own horn with that. That's awful. <laughs> but uh, I'd say that the ones that you probably haven't heard yet and I can't tell you what they are... 
They were actually made first whenever I was writing demos for this game, and we just haven't used them yet. Uh, they're for a special episode at the very last portion of the game. Now, Leon and Simon will tell you, this one has the best music, this episode right here, blah, 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 because it sounds like so-and-so, and Simon will be like, no, it's this one. Um, I think I think it's all it's all really, really cool, and I think it's been an awesome experiment that's shown me, hey, you're not just limited to uh, to writing a bunch of stuff with, with uh, guitar riffs and, you know, make it sound like Trent Reznor. Uh, you can also absolutely work in the realm of ambient and still make it enjoyable, which that's been really awesome for me to be able to see myself do that. Let's move on to the general question. So, please tell everyone, what would you say were some of the toughest challenges that you faced when you were composing these soundtracks? <laughs> uh, I'll get a little little personal here. Um, the number one toughest challenge was not uh, <laughs> not drinking every single day. <laughs> so, let me back up a little bit here. A friend of mine, Robert Atkins, who uh, made some games way back in the 90s all the way till about mid-2000s, and is still working on some other stuff, but under his company, he he created Sin, and he also did some of the uh, the packs for, uh, for uh, the Quake expansion packs. I think it was Quake 2. He was hanging out with me quite a bit back and forth right before I joined on the Dusk, and I was actually working with him on a project that he's uh, he's working on, but um, they've since moved on. I asked him before I got into Dusk, I was like, hey, um, what is, what's some pieces of advice you have? Because I know that you're, you're very, you're like best friends with Adrian Carmack. And he had uh, a lot to do, he had everything to do with the art for uh, a lot of the older id games. And he said, well, he's like, Quake from what I remember is mostly about a really, really dark place kind of in your own head. That's where the art direction was taken from. And, of course, a lot of Hellraiser movies, too, and references. Uh, but it's about finding that that thing in your own head and being able to turn around and basically shoot it in the face, but not having the courage to do so. And I was like, man, that's pretty deep. And the last thing he texted me before I uh, before I started on that was, uh, "Hey, don't get lost. Uh, it's hard to find your way out." So I thought about that for a little bit, and I'm pretty sure I knew what he meant. But um, I went ahead and started writing all this stuff for Dusk. And at first, I was like, "Oh, I'm not going to be able to nail this. I'm not going to be able to nail this." And I started kind of drinking a little too much <laughs> during uh, long nights working trying to just, you know, how do I get the inspiration for this? How do I get the inspiration for that? And um, I found that the more I boozed up, the more I could get lucid and the more I could get into that mindset of uh, essentially negativity. So that worked for a while. It worked for exactly one year and six months where it was just completely out of control <laughs> uh so right up until about five months ago i'd say five months ago i was just completely like oh my gosh i have no idea how i'm gonna finish this game this is way too much work and i feel completely stressed out what am i gonna do uh so i just cleaned myself up i've been like 99 percent sober since uh january and it's been like night and day. So I did find my way out, thank God. <laughs> and I actually got inspiration again from doing that. So you could say that Dusk's development cycle <laughs> took a pretty big toll on me. <laughs> but that's probably been the biggest challenge for sure. But uh, I'm way, 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 way better for it. That's for sure. Prepare yourself. Here comes another song from A Medieval. Roughly how many different versions 
of all your your songs do you end up making before you finally get a piece that you're satisfied with? How, how many demos do you often create? Um, most of the time, it's um, just one song, start to finish. Uh, I just pick and choose really, really, really carefully. And um, sometimes there'll be extra demos. It, it's not a lot. And like in older games, I've had like, moments where people have gone you know hey this isn't really the direction we're looking for okay let's try again okay let's try again okay let's try again like all the way up to like eight times but um if i if it's just me and i'm just being hired because they just like my work then i'm gonna find an idea that i like that if i like it i know that the client should like it and just work with it from start to finish now there's small little tiny details that get changed from version to version and i'm talking minuscule normally it's in the sonics uh but uh most of the time it's just start to finish man yeah not a not a whole lot of extra content that's unused you know while both games will have their soundtracks sold digitally, I believe it was mentioned before about Dusk that anyone who actually buys the game before it goes fully out, I believe they get a free copy of the digital soundtrack. Is that true, or did I make that up in a dream? Uh, that was for the people, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm f like 99% positive. That was for the people who, uh, who ordered it whenever we were in pre-order phase. Before we were like, oh, there's a lot more that we could do to make this game a lot cooler if we had a little bit more time and then we decided to go to early access so the people who were in the pre-order uh or who bought the game in the pre-order phase which i think is like seven thousand people yeah they they all get the full full digital copy of it yeah but you know you're not dreaming it's just it's slated out a little weird it was kind of a uh hey look we we're trying not to do early access, but we want to make the best thing that we can. So to make up for it a little bit, we're going to give you this for free. And by the way, here's episode two. That was right whenever we launched episode two, I believe, as well. So can we ever expect perhaps either the Dusk or a Medieval soundtracks perhaps sold physically on CDs? You know, like the Doom IDKFA remix album and the, and the Rise of the Triad 2013 album and the Bombshell album as well. Are you going to do CD releases, maybe, in limited quantities? Yeah, that's that's been talked about quite a bit. There's uh, there's a lot of information being thrown around from Dave, uh, who's the guy who pretty much calls all the shots, for the most part, as far as the marketing side, about wanting to do a huge, uh, like, two or three LP Dusk vinyl as well, just because it's, it's so much music. Um... Uh, but I'm sure we'll do CDs as well. I don't see why not. Um, a medieval will get its own treatment, I'm sure. But uh, I'm hoping all that stuff will be taken care of in the next, I don't know, two to three months. <laughs> we're we're kind of just doing this stuff ourselves, so we just got to watch out for each other. And, like, you know, if uh, somebody doesn't mention it, it's probably not going to get done. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll make sure to uh, mention it a hundred times, although he's been on the ball a lot about that and he's initiated a lot of emails. So we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm like 99% sure that'll happen though. We've got right here another soundtrack sample from Dusk. Let's talk a bit about Ion Maiden, which is a demo for the prequel for the top-down shooter Bombshell. Um, Ion Maiden came out fairly recently, but you did not compose for this game. Why so? At the time, I actually really wanted to. Um, I liked what I saw, and I saw a lot of potential with it at the guys with uh, at Void Point who made that. They're all super, super talented. And... Um, we were actually working at one point. I was working with them at one point. I did do two pieces of music. It was two demos. Uh, you know, and just go back on what I said. <laughs> it was two demos for them that I made that I still have uh, that were originally supposed to be slated in that game. And I was going to start working with them and start helping them with sound assets. But uh, at the time, the company really needed me 
the company being Interceptor, the the company really needed me on uh, on the Red Rogers project, and we were uh, getting really close to a lot of deadlines to where uh, there was enough work to where I didn't have time for both, and I just had to kind of go, okay, I gotta bite the bullet, I gotta I gotta help these guys with this, and I gotta focus here. So um, essentially. I was taken off of that one, and we we went and we finished Rad Rogers, which I love, by the way. And it came out pretty great. Like that was just another type of genre that I hadn't touched on yet. But yeah, man, how cool would that have been? Like, cause Ion Maiden's really badass. Like, I I could be like the uh, the grandfather of the Holy Trinity. I uh, you know, like I did all the music for all three Ion Maiden, a medieval and dusk. It's like, oh, nobody else can wear that crown. <laughs> but yeah, like it's it's uh. I did a little bit, and I'm sure I'll release something someday, like later on down the road when we're all done here. But uh, the game's awesome. Everybody should go check that out. So any thoughts to share regarding the Ion Maiden's demo soundtrack? Mm, that's not going to happen right now. <laughs> Good old-fashioned legal ties. Let's play a music sample. Now, composer legend Lee Jackson, he recently released his solo album Calibrations, which featured music from Duke Nukem 3D, the 20th Anniversary World Tour, and three original songs. Um, were you able to check out this album yet? And if so, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's really cool, and it's definitely right in the vein of the stuff that everybody loved from Lee back in the day. And if they're a fan of Lee's and they don't have it, they need to go grab it. Um, he was actually sending me preliminary mixes beforehand, like, hey, what do you think of this? And every time he sent me something, it was, it was, I was like, man, this is like getting in a time machine. This is so cool. Yeah, I really dig it. And I think that uh, he's able to, he's able to build on a little bit of what he's, uh, what he's best known for in a really, really colorful way. And it does nothing but compliment his sound. So yeah, I've already checked it out. It's pretty freaking sweet. I also heard you talk at the end. <laughs> mm -hmm. I start on the interview, which um, I'll, I'll give a bit of a, an extra bit of context. Yeah. What happened was, right, um, Lee started to send me samples as well and send me like full songs, say, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I love this track. And oh, yeah, I really like this track. And he sent me the fish poker, the dope fish kind of theme. And I said, mm, it's really good, but I think it needs a burp at the end. <laughs> he went, good lord, well, I'm going to get Joe Siegler for this one, but I don't know, he's had surgery, and I said, ah, no need to get Joe, don't worry about it, Lee, wait here, so run to the studio, grab a bottle of cola, and just burp relentlessly, constantly, and said, here you go, pick one, and so, yeah, um, I remember telling my dad about this, um, like, a couple of weeks back or so, and saying, and that was technically my first ever debut on an official CD, it was just me burping into a microphone. <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere. <laughs> now on to the next Metallica record. <laughs> As for the interview, um, that was actually supposed to be a Kickstarter bonus because uh, I was talking with him saying, hey, we should get this like fundraised. How about that? I can help out and, you know, do an interview as a bit of a backer bonus, something like that. Then, uh, But he decided, I'll put it on the album and I'll get you to record some liner notes as well for the legalities and things like that. So I thought, yeah, why not? Sure. Sounds like fun to me. So all in all, hell of a lot of fun. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, you you can totally you got that story for a long time <laughs> if I ever have grandkids I'm gonna tell them and say D do you ever want to hear about my escapades on a, a CD <laughs> what's a CD what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> get some coffee it's gonna be a very long discussion kids that's always my favorite is at some point in in our lives we're gonna mention yeah, I had that on CD, and somebody's going to look at you and go, what the fuck is a CD? <laughs> like, oh, that fucking blows my mind. <laughs> oh, we're just going like, to pause for a moment like, oh my god, my worst fears yeah. have come true, I'm old! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay then, okay. Final question, a rather interesting one. Now, I know you've had a few people kind of ping you relentlessly about this. Oh, here we go. Yep. <laughs> I know exactly what's coming. Yep, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the ever-so-obvious question. Andrew, please tell everyone listening, 
Will you please lend me your beard? And no, it's not that. <laughs> it's about uh, the Doom 2 remix album. So anything to share on that one? How goes progress? You know, the usual questions. Uh, <laughs> no, there's, there's nothing to share right now. I've been completely swamped, and I'm still swamped. I have, like, quite a few projects that I haven't even been able to talk about yet. Uh, that um, I'll be able to get into at a later date, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing just yet. Old Andrew needs to pay his bills, you know. <laughs> and plus, I really actually do want to go down to um, ID and actually talk to somebody there about that, and you know, just kind of ask him, "Hey, can I get your blessing on this?" Rather than just kind of put something out like I did last time. I just don't want to step on anybody's toes. All right, then. So, I guess that's the, the mystery of the Doom 2 remix album all sorted, so... Yeah, not, not totally. There are things that are done. <laughs> Just not a lot. For the most part, mum's the word. <laughs> Best way to put it. All right, then. So, Andrew, let me just say thank you so much for coming back on board again. It's been an absolute blast. Yeah, dude. Anytime, man. Thanks for having me. So, is there anything you'd like to say to your many fans out there? Um... Go buy Dusk in a Medieval. <laughs> and thank you for listening. <laughs> that too, yeah. <laughs> so, I'd personally like to thank all of my wonderful listeners out there. Thank you very much for tuning into this interview on The Cyber Den, your weekly dose of tech and games. Thanks for coming on board, Andrew. See you later. See ya. Have a good one. Um... Sorry, I'm getting a, a bunch of drunken teenagers starting yelling things out loud. I'm doing an interview! <laughs> get a job! I don't know, maybe, maybe they're drinking in order to get inspiration for uh, composing music themselves, or perhaps. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> this gives me an idea for a song! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wasted. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep this in the interview as a blooper at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, put it in the whole thing. <laughs>